Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Letting Go in 2019. We're reading from the book, The Language of Letting Go by Melody Beattie, copyright 1990. Surrender. Made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understood him. That's step three of Al-Anon, which is Alcoholics Anonymous, for those of you that don't know what Al-Anon is. Surrendering, surrendering to a power greater than ourselves is how we become empowered. We become empowered in a new, better, more effective way than we believed possible. Doors open, windows open, possibilities occur. Our energy becomes channeled at last in areas and ways that work for us. We become in tune with the plan for our life and our place in the universe. And there is a plan and a place for us. We shall see that. We shall know that. The universe will open up and make a special place for us with all that we need provided. It will be good. Understand that it is good now. Learning to own our power will come if we are open to it. We do not need to stop at powerlessness and helplessness. That is a temporary place where we reevaluate where we have been trying to have power when we have none. When we have none, once we surrender, it is time to become empowered. Let the power come naturally. It is there. It is ours. Today, I will be open to understanding what it means to own my power. I will accept powerlessness where I have no power. I will also accept the power that is mine to receive. Let's talk about power. What is in our power? The only thing that's in our power is our right to make choices, our decision about how we perceive things, our attitude when we wake up every morning, that is in our power. We can't control what's going to happen during the day, but we can control how we perceive it, how we react and respond to it. What we cannot have power over, nor control over, is what other people think of us, how other people treat us, and exactly what goes on in our day. When we get behind the wheel of a car, and I know this all too well from having to drive everywhere lately, we can control our steering wheel. We can drive our car to where we're going. We can even decide when to change lanes, when to stop, when to go, when to turn, when to turn the car on and off, and what parts of the car to manipulate to get the car to do what we want. What we can't control is... Lulu Lucy over here, <laughs> who insists they have to be ahead of us in the lane so they cross and pass on the wrong side of our car. We can't control Daffy Dan over here speeding, breaking the speed limit so that he can get through the light before it changes and causing accidents in his way. We can't control other people swerving in front of us. We also can't control, once we get to work, the co-workers who get on our nerves. We can't control the people we work with that might have had a bad morning and they've come to take it out on everybody around. We can't control any of that. We can control that at certain mealtimes, what we eat, what we choose to indulge in. We can control our minds telling us, ah, well, you had a rough time getting to work. You may as well eat that huge piece of coffee cake that the staff member left in the kitchen for the staff. When you know you don't need that huge piece of coffee cake, you just want it because it's there. We can control that. We're not powerless over that choice. We can control our attitude when we're at work or when we're at the spa, working out, and we see somebody that, oh, they think they're all that. Look at that nice body, and, you know, they're just flaunting it all over the place. We can control our attitude. We can control our thoughts. We can. Not all of them. Sometimes thoughts will pop in. But you can even control, once they pop in, what you're going to do with them. Ooh, that guy is really good looking. Mm, I wonder if he might make a better date 
than my boyfriend right now. Or, hmm, I wonder if I should hook up with her. My old ball and chain wife at home is driving me nuts. You can control that. You can take that thought captive. That's what they call it in the Bible. And you can say, no, I'm not thinking on that. And if you believe in the devil, you can say, no, devil, I'm not going there. That's a sin. I'm not thinking that way. You have that power. But you don't have power over other people and what they do to seduce you, to trip you up, to, to not make you angry, but to do things that provoke that anger feeling in you. You can't control them doing those things, but you can control how you react to it. You can control not going and beating them up. You can tr control not leaving your wife for this lady over here or leaving your boyfriend for this guy over there. You can control your feelings of anger and lust and revenge. I'm not saying every person on this earth has control over those things. We all have been hearing about some people recently that haven't had control or didn't choose to take the control. But I'm talking to the people that know deep down inside you make your own choices, your own decisions, and you commit your own actions about any given thing happening at any given time. So you really do have power. You're not powerless except over other people. Think about that today. And tune in next time for Letting Go in 2019. Tomorrow. See you then. God bless.